Today is June, January 26, 19... This isn't right. Today is actually June 1st, uh, 2022, and I can't get my time to sync on the Pine Time. So that's a video for another time. Today, we have a Aruba Instant On network switch that we will be doing just a very basic... Um, well, an unboxing video and uh, basic VLAN configuration. Um, let's open the box. And inside we have packaging material. Ah, so we've got some kind of thing, some other kind of thing. And inside we have a, it should be a eight port. Yeah, there we are, an eight port with two SPF slots. Um, we'll just quickly do a around the world. The business end. There's like a little fan hole on the top. And some convenient wall mount brackets, which I'm sure will be used on this device. Um, we're going to go ahead and put in one of these one gig cards or uh, SPF things. Um, what do you call them? SPF modules. And I just bought one off uh, Amazon for uh, 10 G tech. Wait a second. 1.25 G. 1 G. Did I buy the wrong type? No, I did not. Let's do a little math here and explain why that is the case. Um, it also came with screws and a power supply. We're going to use this as our math surface. Um, so gigabytes and gigabits. This is 1.25 G, which is short for gigabit, whereas a flash drive or a hard drive is a gigabyte. So a byte equals eight bits. So when you say I'm going to move one gigabyte of data, you're actually talking about eight times as much information in terms of gigabits. So one gigabyte will contain eight gigabits, the small b. And that's because this byte right here, represented by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bits of information. Capiche? So that's where you get the, the 1.25. This is represented in... Um, no, that's not where you get the 1.25. The, the, the difference here is that there are... Um, they're talking about the electrical pieces, not the data pieces of kind of how this thing operates. So there's going to be 10 bits that are transmitted... And the first set of bits and the last set of bits are control. Like, this is the start of my message. This is the end of my message. And um, those are actually used for the synchronization, so you don't have to have a clock sync. But you put your data into these spots right here, whatever this translates to, and that's where your information is. So it's 10 bits in total because you're 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 including the number but you're actually your actual payload is only these 8 bits in there and that's how you get to the 1.25 gigabit per second per second all right um tangent over just looking at the power adapter here um so it is a 12 volt 0.9 amp and it's got a um little tip positive negative outside with the little thingy and the thingy. So that sticks in there. Um, that's the requirements and the actual power supply that ships with it. Uh, HPE is a 12 volt 1.085. So, it's, you know, it's adequate for the, the usage. And uh, that lines up with the same info on the bottom. So let's turn it on. Okay, we got it on the uh, healing bench, if you will. So we'll take our 1 gig slash 1.25 gig. They're all the same thing. It's just marketing stuff. And uh, yeah, that's going to live in there now forever. Um, let's boot it up and we'll see how many gigabits we can transfer per second. Ha, 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 ha. So the lights are coming on. 
The little blue light is blinkalating. These are supposed to be instant on. This does not feel instant. Actually, it's probably kind of a joke. I'm assuming that these are not going to be instant at all. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it um, access to my network. And then I'm going to plug my laptop in that I've got here on the bench as well. So we get datas to here. So let's see if we can find it on the, um, the router and see what IP address it's got. Or if it's got its own, maybe we should look at the documentation. Um, interesting. So you're supposed to be able to download an app and do this from your phone. Does that mean that has Bluetooth of some sort? Or wireless? Or That's uh, interesting. Let's um, keep reading. Safety, compliance, and warranty information. And, uh, you know, here's our weighty user manual, which is literally off of a copy machine. Um, it comes in English and all these other languages, which were all stapled and connected. So we're going to get rid of this. We're down to just two pages. Um, environmental specifications. Um, safety. There's no instructions. Preview and installing. Prepare the site. Unpack the switch. Connect the power. Mount the switch. You're supposed to mount it after observing the self-test. Then remove the power. Then mount the switch. Connect the switch to a power source. Install transceivers. Connect the network cable. Configure the switch for network operation. Yes, that's what I want to do. I would provide feedback that give me an idea of, on paper, what this experience is going to be like instead of just download an app, unless this is actually the only way to do this. Let's, uh, let's look on the computer. I don't know what's going on, but the lights have suddenly changed and I haven't done a simple thing. I've done nothing. I've done nothing but wait. Um, it seems to have taken a good eight minutes. I didn't time it, um, but it took a while and now I've got blinky lights and now I've got data. Okay. Um, I found the IP address in my DHCP leases. And so I have the option to use instant on cloud or local. Um, I'm going to use local management. So this is wireless, but it is connected on the same VLAN, same network. So it should really just work the same way. Uh, I don't, I don't want to create an account. Um, that may be part of this. Hmm. Well, um, we didn't try the old standard admin. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It works just fine. Um, we do have to create a username. And so, um, uh, I'm going to just keep it as admin and I'm going to use a unsecure password for now. Oh, QWERTY123. Well, let me do that. There we go. Don't set your passwords like that. I'm going to reset this after I'm done playing with it, and, you know, I'll do it the right way. But just in case so I don't forget, I'm going to put this label on there. In the meantime, we get to wait for a software update, and we get to time how long it takes for it to actually reboot. Yay! And more waiting. I didn't actually start a timer. It's probably been about four minutes so far. Um, we'll time it for real in a little bit. This feels an awful lot like when you buy a new Xbox game and then you wait for a 40 gig download to finish. Well, finally, lights are flashing and doing things again. Now it's going to go. There we go. Whoops. As if you didn't already know my password. Okay. So we're now in the interface and, and before we get too deep into the settings and whatnot, we need to have a plan for how we're going to be using this device. So, um, I've got one of eight devices that we'll be deploying. Um, this is a work project, but, uh, we need each of them to have these VLANs provisioned on there. So there's going to be one VLAN for the management, 
one for the land, one for the guest. Um, and just for the sake of this simple explanation, we're going to have um, a 10.0.0 subnet network that lines up with the VLANs, makes it easy to identify. Um, and for clarity and making it easy, it's just going to be the last octet that changes. And, you know, we're going to give out 254 addresses, if you will, um, in each network. So um, let's go ahead and provision the VLANs. Um, to do it through the GUI, it should really be as simple as clicking VLANs, clicking the add button here, and then we're going to enter the VLAN ID. So we're going to call 1MGMT, MT, click apply. Oh, it already has that assigned. So we're going to call LAN. Oh, sorry. Doing this all sorts of wrong. We'll start with LAN. Apply. And then we'll create another one. 30, we'll call this guest. Apply. I think, will it let us edit? Uh, no, it won't. Um, and then up here, we've got the ability to manage these. So the SPF is in port number nine. And the way that this is going to work is that we know that that was going to be plugged into another switch somewhere. So we're going to say port nine is going to be tagged with V20 and V30, and it's going to be native V1. So that means that if you plug right into that with a fiber adapter thing, it's going to be untagged VLAN 1, but it's going to be tagged 20 and 30. So it's acting like a hybrid trunk port. All the rest of these, I'm not sure where we'll plug into them. Um, they're going to be assigned to the appropriate VLAN. So say, for example, this one is already assigned to the LAN. This one, let's just say for fun, is going to be assigned to the LAN. Oh, tagged VLAN. We're not going to have any tagged VLANs. We're going to just say 20. So this one... When you plug into it, you just get VLAN 20 when you plug into it. So port, what is that? Two, native V20. So when you plug into that, you get V20. Let's do the same for this for guest. So we'll say 30. So nothing tagged. We'll do that 30. So now when you plug into that one, Native 30. So it comes from your network over here and gets split up into these various lands. The untagged, the tagged. And then on this third one, this fourth one, what we're going to do is we're going to say tag 20, 30, and untag 1. Just like we did before, above port 4. Tag 20, 30, untag 1. That's a 1, not a 7. Um, so that's that's really it. So this is the this is the visual way of doing it. We're gonna save our configuration. And then what else is there to do? Is there a um like a commit thing? You can set up the IP addresses, user management, switching, port mirroring, loop protection, all the good network stuff. It's very easy to get to. Um, we don't need any static routes. We don't need DHCP relay. It's already passing stuff. You can ping. Mm, back up the things. I guess saving it was all that we needed to do. Okay, great. Well then, let's... um. Let's see how long it takes to boot. That would be a great idea. So I'm going to, I guess, log out and we'll just unplug it. Super high tech, huh? And here, oh, fumbling around.
Makes for a great video. And then we're going to watch and wait and see how long it takes for this to come up. I won't make you watch the whole thing. Oh, the lights have changed at a minute 40. So it's getting close. Two minutes isn't bad for an enterprise switch for the big ones. Just surprised that this being so small is taking so long. And we're very close. There we go. All right. So about two minutes. Um, so that's not instant by a long shot. It's not it's not terrible, but it's not certainly what I would expect from something that says literally instant in the marketing. It's not instant. Sadly, there is no SSH accessibility for this device, so you're limited to just what you can get on the web interface. It's not terrible, considering that the web interface actually feels pretty easy to use and everything is exactly where I would expect it to be. Um, not a bad little switch. It's about 100 and change, depending on where you get it. Um, nice little managed switch for your environment. They're also available with a PoE version, but it roughly doubles the cost. Um, it depends on what your needs are. Um, that's the Aruba Instadon 1930. And uh, you can also manage it with the cloud, which is probably useful in a small business environment, but it's not so helpful in this particular installation. Um, my only bit of advice is that when you're configuring these, maybe depending on where it's deployed, put some documentation physically on the device. Maybe you don't want to put the username and password there um, unless it's in a physically secure location. But it is nice if you're using VLANs to just go ahead and physically label a couple of the ports that are important for what is relevant. Otherwise, someone's got to figure out how to manually reset the device, you know, using the power of that magic tool that everyone has on their desk. Um, Aruba Insta on. It's not so instant, but it's still on. Uh... You know what to do!